Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Deha. Today we're going to take a look at rocker switches and how to interface them with a Raspberry Pi using MicroPython. What we're going to cover today, we'll take a look at a few examples of them, their applications, we'll review a data sheet so we understand some of the important attributes, we'll take a look at a fritzing wiring diagram to help explain the connections, and finally, we'll take a look at some MicroPython code that will allow us to handle them from within the Pico. Rocker switches came around in the 1980s. Actually, I could have swore I've seen them before then, but the references I'm looking at right now in research shows that their invention was in the 1980s. Now, that could be for a specific application. However, um, rocker switches are a modern-day uh, version of the toggle switch. And I think part of the appeal for them is uh, they're less obtrusive. When they're on a panel or on a device, uh, they're still very easy to actuate. You can look at it and determine whether something is on or off, but it doesn't stick out real far, so it doesn't catch you or you don't bump into it uh, when handling the device. Now we'll take a quick look here at a couple of physical switches here on the workbench. This is the one we'll be working with today, very typical. This one is a panel mount, you slide it in. It's got little wings on it that clip and hold it in the sheet metal housing. Actuation, like all rocker switches, it'll rotate around its center, just simply turning it on and off. This one would have solder on connections and notice they're bent at a right angle. As you can imagine, switches have to come in a large variety of configurations to meet their uh, desired use. Here is another uh, rocker switch. Uh, this one, same type of panel mount. This has three terminals, so that tells me it's probably got a light in it. Uh, the markings on it show that it's 12 volt, 15 amps, so that's nice. Uh, actuation, exactly like any other rocker switch. Here is another rocker switch and we call this a dip switch. You may or may not have seen these uh, in application or in use. Often you'll see them soldered onto circuit boards and you'll know there's, notice there's two rows of pins, thus dual inline package, meaning that there's uh, two rows of pins underneath and that's the style of package for circuit board mounting. And this one contains eight uh, rocker switches and you can just simply use a smaller device rather than your big fat finger to turn the device on or off. Now these are super handy in electronics on a circuit board to turn on and off uh, options or features that you want the whole device to be operating under. Uh, this basic rocker switches can be used to turn power devices on and off as noted by the current rating on this particular switch, Oop, this one here, uh, 15 amps at 12 volts, that's substantial amount of power to be switching on and off. Rocker switches handle that very effectively. We can also use them in our software to turn a feature on or off, activate the feature or deactivate it, etc. And then we would compare against that state of the switch to determine if we want that feature to run or execute. Now let's take a look at a data sheet for rocker switches. This particular example that I found uh, is a really nice one. Uh, they cover a good variety of switches in their data sheet. Uh, and here you can see many of the styles, which might be an indicator as to why they're so popular. Uh, there's an awful lot of investment in rocker switches to make them attractive and to follow the trends of modern day society. Uh, but what we're looking for is what is the important attribute and that is primarily uh, how much current can it switch. And in our case, again, we're just working with 3.3 uh, volts and milliamps. Here we're rated up to 10 or 16 amps, so we're well within the safe range uh, of this particular type of switch. Now, to give you an idea on a switch and how many different variations there can be for it, this would be a part number uh, chart for this particular type of switch. These are all the different types of switch functions. 
the different types of actuators, terminations, contact material, seal, uh, the colors of it, the color of the frame, etc. So all these different combinations can be put together to make up switches so that they look attractive and function properly for your needs. Now let's take a look at a fritzing diagram of how we connect a rocker switch. It's truly quite simple. Here's our Pico and as I have a habit of doing I run a ground wire off to a rail so I have one handy. Not really used in this application. This uh, pin right here is the 3.3 volts out. We're going to bring that down and around up to a positive rail here. That comes over to the yellow wire which goes into the common of the switch which could literally be either of the two terminals on a typical rocker switch although there are two position rocker switches or three ways. Um, and then our wire comes out of the switch right into GP number 15. So the electrical circuit would be the power is here, 3.3 volts, goes into the switch where it stays until the switch is turned to the on position, allowing the current and voltage to flow into the pin, and then we would look at it and see that as a high. Now let's take a look at that on the actual breadboard. As you can see, everything is wired exactly the same, not quite as pretty, but we've got our ground wire running to a ground rail. Again, not used. Just good practice when setting up a breadboard with a Pico. And then we've got our 3.3 volt out going to the positive rail where our yellow wire brings current into the switch in its off state. It stays there when you turn the switch on. Current is allowed to flow through, in our case, to GP15. Now let's take a look at the MicroPython program. It's truly quite simple, almost as simple as the wiring is. We're going to import a couple of libraries. The machine library gives us access to the hardware, in our case the pins that we want to access, one for output, one for input, and then we're going to import the MicroPython version of the Python time library, which allows us to do things with time. In our case, we're going to put a sleep within our loop just to slow things down a little bit so we can see things happening. We're going to create an LED object or an LED uh, by using the onboard LED on the Pico. And that little LED is right in this area and it works as a good device uh, so we don't have to do any additional wiring. So we're going to say let's create an object called LED from machine.pin, pin number 25, and we're going to set that pin up as an output. In other words, we're going to power a device with that output. And that device, of course, is our LED. Now we're going to create an object for our actual switch. And very creatively, I call it rocker switch. If you've got multiples, you could use add an underscore, one, two, three, four, whatever the case may be. And you can create and use many different switches in the same program that way. Uh, we're creating this new object from machine.pin. We want to use GP pin number 15. We could use any of the GP pins. I just use that one as practice. Uh, we're going to configure that pin as an input, thus noted by the dot .in. And we're going to use a pull down, internal pull down resistor to ensure that that switch stays in the off state and isn't affected by uh, transient voltages or stray voltages that could give us a false on reading. We're going to use a polling method to look at uh, the state of that switch. Uh, one of my habits is I always print ready, set, go when the program starts to run or enter the, the endless loop. And that would be your typical MicroPython main loop. This is where you do all your work in your program. Now these are the two lines of code where we are going to look at the state of that switch to perform whatever action it is that we want to do. So in this case, if the rocker switch value is equal to true, if it's on, in other words, if GP15 is high, we're going to turn the LED 
on using LED.value and set it to 1. We'll also print the word on and that'll appear down below in the shell. Of course, in your program, you would be using this conditional statement to perform logic here for your application, be it run a particular part of code or a particular feature or to not run it if the switch is off. Uh, so the inverse of the switch being on would be if rocker switch value is equal to false, meaning it's currently set low on GP15. We'll print off, turn the LED off, and slowing down the loop, we're just going to put a 100 millisecond uh, sleep in there so that we can see things operate. Now let's take a look at this over on the breadboard and see how it actually works in the real world. So we'll run the program. And uh, currently nothing is going on. The switch is in the off state. Uh, we can see that here on the shell area of the Thani editor. I'll turn the switch on. Our LED follows that logic by turning the Pico turns that LED on. And then we'll see that in the shell area of the Thani editor, we see the word on. And now we can toggle back and forth, just like that. And that's truly how simple it is to program and handle a toggle switch or a rocker switch or any of these types of switches that have one of two states. I think that'll wrap it up for our discussion using rocker switches on the Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython. As with most of the videos in this series, we have files that you can download, which would include uh, the fr fritzing diagram, and source code, uh, perhaps some other information uh, as needed. You can download that from our companion website, makingstuffwithchrisdayhut.com. Links are provided in the description below. I'd also like to mention that there's probably about 50 or 60 total videos planned for this series on the Raspberry Pi Pico and interfacing it using it uh, with a variety of devices. You can find more information about the full series on our companion website with links to each of the videos and a, a complete description. I'd like to express my thanks. I really do appreciate you spending time watching the video with me today. Uh, hopefully you found it informative or entertaining. Um, if so, I would hope that you'll subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It costs you nothing, so it's uh, certainly very good value. Uh, if you like the video, please click the like button and uh, there's this notification bell somewhere in that same area that allows you to be notified whenever I publish a new video. So that can be kind of handy if you're following along, especially with this video series on the Raspberry Pi Pico. With that, I hope to see you in the next video.